Welcome back everybody, this is Rodrigo Fonador with another episode of Asheville Real Estate News. Today, we are getting into a topic that is definitely going to have some different points of views on it. We're going to be talking about the impact that real estate or real estate development, you know, houses, buildings, the way the land changes, can affect climate change and what are the ripple effects as we keep developing, you know, here at Asheville but also across the world. Uh, so I wanted to bring on a guest today. Uh, they're over at the Collider, as you guys know. They're a leader here in the area for just anything that has to do with science and climate. And uh, we're going to be talking about that. Without further ado, let me introduce to you guys Doug Bergerman with the Eco Real. <laughs> and I think I botched both of those. I'm sorry. <laughs> You did great. Thanks, Rodrigo. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. I think I practiced too many times. Yeah, I, perhaps. I tripped over it. Um, you know, Doug, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I know we kind of got introduced via email to set this up. And uh, that being said, I don't know a ton about you, obviously. So it would be great. Do you mind just give us the yeah. lowdown? Are you always from Asheville? Well, how'd you get into what you're doing now, etc.? Yeah, sure. Um, so um, I moved here in 2008 mm -hmm. uh, to start a consulting firm. Um, I started ecological services and markets, okay. and um, and that was a grew out of my my dissertation work, mm -hmm. and I developed a, a landscape scale cap and trade system okay. for biodiversity. Okay, and what's the uh, is there a simple recap of what that is? Yeah, so basically it's a way that you know as real estate development occurs mm -hmm. and impacts endangered species, you know okay. you can offset those impacts by restoring or protecting habitat habitat elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So I developed a way to evaluate the, the equivalency of those trades. Okay. So how do you do that without violating the Endangered Species Act mm -hmm. and provide a net benefit for the environment? Okay, wow. Yeah, so, um, and I, I was doing a postdoc in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, applying artificial intelligence to optimize those markets. Right. And uh, just coming back from Germany, I was looking for a place to minimize my culture shock. Okay. Coming back. <laughs> Well, how long were you in Germany? Uh, almost two years. Yeah, so that's definitely enough time to, to get used to the world. Yeah. Or... It was great. It was a great experience. I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of work was it, it was in, the, in Georgia and North Carolina. And so, you know, I've always wanted to live in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And so I picked Asheville just on a whim. Yeah. I was driving through and I <laughs> had lunch and had a burger and grabbed a real estate magazine. Yeah. And realized I could afford some acreage here. Yeah. That so I was works. Like, I'm just going to move here. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, what part of the county do you live in then? I live in Madison County. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful up there. Isn't it's it? great. Yeah, I've got a great spot. Very cool. So you moved here in 2008, and right? Yeah, 2008, and did uh, consulting on the biodiversity work for a long time. Had some employees mm -hmm. and did a lot of great work. Um, and then that work ended in 2014, and I was kind of trying to figure out what I do with, with my skill set and right. how to apply it. And um, and then I first started trying to develop a uh, a natural capital fund. Okay. For I, I don't know if I've ever heard that word yeah, before. Yeah, a natural either. capital fund for climate adaptation. So okay. basically, you know, our real estate market is is really enhanced by the quality of our environment, mm -hmm. right? The yeah. national, national forest, the clean water, mm -hmm. clean, clean air, and all the recreation. And trying to find a way to pay back nature. How do, we, mm -hmm. how do we get money back into nature? So right. I was trying to set up a voluntary um, a voluntary user tax. <laughs> Fair enough. And, um, and so I worked on that for about a year and a half and had some support from uh, the Forest Service in, in New Belgium, and mm -hmm. but mostly spent an embarrassing amount of, money, of my own money trying to pull that together mm -hmm. and, um, and couldn't get it funded. I really couldn't get the quite the collaboration going that I was hoping for. So I decided to walk out of that and uh, that's still going. <laughs> Some mm -hmm. nonprofits are still working on that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and then from there, um, I also was invited to write a proposal for the UN to design oh, wow. design economic incentives for climate adaptation. What was that experience like? Just total, totally curious about working with you know such a large organization. Well, I, I did. Like... I just I was invited to submit a proposal. I didn't really work that closely with them, mm -hmm. but based on some of my publications, they found me and. Um, and I worked with one of their former lead economists, and okay. we put a proposal in, and um, we didn't get it. Right. But I learned a lot about climate adaptation okay. within an incentive structure. Mm -hmm. It hit me that it, in developing countries, a major problem I had were there's uncertain property rights. 
So I'm from Colombia. South okay. America is where I grew up. And I would say that that holds true. Like there are, you can, like, I think it's, there's degrees of that here, but if you go and you squat on some land for enough time, it right. becomes yours. Right. And, uh, you know, well, I grew up, there's a lot of guerrilla warfare. Right. And so there's a lot of changing hands of property of people who would like be willing to deal with the uncertainty of living in a quote unquote hot zone. They're just like, become landowners all of a sudden and it's just it's crazy so yeah that that's very relatable yeah it's, it's <laughs> fascinating and so I, I spent three months in Argentina and a month in Bolivia working okay. to I, I love Latin America yeah um, but just that whole like fuzzy property rights thing mm -hmm. you know for, yeah. for me I was like how do we how do we assign incentives for adaptation when mm -hmm. we don't know who owns the land yeah and um, it hit me that we have really good property rights yeah it's I, I don't know if I'd ever be able to do what I do here in Colombia, or at least right. not within the time amount of time that I've done as far as like learning curve and everything. It's crazy. Right. So it hit me that I could become a realtor mm -hmm. and um, drive climate adaptation by becoming a realtor. Mm -hmm. And so that was like June of 2016, and I jumped into real estate school. Right. And um, it really, I don't know, just being in real estate school, <laughs> it's very different, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so I realized how important it would be to have a continuing education course for climate change. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to educate in order to, to build the market. Right. So what is it that you're doing now then? I mean, it sounds like you've had a lot of really good experiences and just exposure to different ideas, working with different people, obviously, that have led you to like today. So what, what is today for you? Well, today it's... Um, you know, I've been developing climate adaptation real estate services, mm -hmm. and that's largely focused on building a climate, a, a continuing education course for climate change, mm -hmm. um, and getting it accepted by state commissions. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, so a lot of it's uh, interacting with uh, local associations and real estate mm -hmm. schools. Okay. And and going through their process of getting approval. Mm -hmm. So after you know a year and a half, I have it accepted in five states. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, pretty excited. But yeah, I'd say so. I, yeah. I'm sure it's not an easy process. It's it's been a slow process <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And it's really dependent on like just getting on the phone and like asking for help. Yeah, I'm sure it's like who you end up talking to goes a long way to her or whatnot. But right, and then calling up real estate schools and say we should talk about climate change. Mm -hmm. You know, about half the time people just hang up. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah. That, I mean, I, I guess that surprises me a little bit, but. I mean, it, I guess it's cold calling to a certain degree, it, so that's not that uncommon, I suppose. Yeah, it is. Like I, I, a lot of people feel like uh, that, you know, climate change really isn't germane to the practice of real estate yet. Still, I'd say that, that I mean, at least conversations uh, overall, unless you've got somebody who's very passionate about it, I don't hear about it. Um, you know, right. as I mentioned uh, when we were first started talking uh, earlier today, I don't know much about it. I don't know. I've really been, can say I've given it much thought at all either. So what does that curriculum look like? Let's let's talk about, I mean, it sounds like you're pretty passionate about this, right? Sure. So yeah. how how much of that, what, what's, how did it start? Where did you like get that fire to start calling, you know, associations and be like, hey, like, let's include this in a curriculum. Where, where did that begin? Um... I mean, the passion just, you know, came from my, you know, 25 years of working in environmental consulting and mm -hmm. education, right? And just knowing that, you know, markets only work when buyers and sellers have good information, mm -hmm. right? And so my feeling was that there is a huge gap of, uh, there's like no consumer protection for climate change, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. And where it should start should be the real estate market, is my, is my feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, the real estate market provides a lot of rules yeah. and regulations. It does. You know, so I was just putting the climate change information within that context. Mm -hmm. You know, what, how, how do we put climate change within the context of the agency? Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, what does, the, what does that look like? So you go, this curriculum that you're rolling out, right. what, are, what are you teaching agents? What are, what are things we should know about it? Well, so basically, you know, I, mm -hmm. um, ideally you, you take the course, but the, just the outline would be yeah. talking about, what, you know, what is climate change? Mm -hmm. Um, how do you communicate what climate change is? Mm -hmm. I talk a bit about science and hypothesis okay. testing. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, talk about how it relates to agency and property rights. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? So we have all this carbon being released in the atmosphere that mm -hmm. nobody's paying to release the carbon into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So right, that's an externality to the market. 
right? And yet we have all these severe weather events and storms that can be attributed partially to climate change mm -hmm. that are reducing property uh, values. Right. So the cycle then, to summarize, mm -hmm. make sure I yeah. guys, the essence is like, hey, anytime you have a house or a structure or anything like that, there's some sort of carbon footprint or release that's <coughs> that's occurring. <coughs> there's no quote unquote cost of that, right? It's just happening despite anything. And then there's going to definitely be an effect down the road that's going to eventually drive down a price potentially down uh, or the value down, right? Yeah, to a certain extent. So, but I, I'm not really focusing on the, the carbon footprint of the house. Okay. Right. So I'm looking at just the climate change occurring due to mm -hmm. the release of methane and CO2 okay. in, in the broader picture. So one thing I've, I've done with the class mm -hmm. is really separated out from the green building. Right. Realm because okay. I feel like the, the whole green building movement has been very effective. Yeah, and there's some very good classes mm -hmm. talking about energy efficiency and reusable uh, materials right. and things of that nature. So I don't really go into that, but I, but I talk about how you know the climate is changing mm -hmm. and how that affects property values through issues like you know wildfire, yeah. drought, mm -hmm. sea level rise, flooding, and then as realtors, you mm -hmm. know we we can't be expect to be experts. Right. But we are expected to be the source of the source, right? We're expected to know about, you know, lead-based paint, mm -hmm. um, asbestos. So, so it's just raising the bar as far as, like, what you should know about or be able to communicate to your clients as an agent, right? Right. So, like, 20 years ago, nobody was really talking about lead paint very much. Right. But then it's come up. Um, so when you're talking about the difference between green building mm -hmm. and the climate change, I'm glad you clarified that. In yeah. my mind, this whole time, I've kind of been thinking that there's the overlap, which I think you noticed from uh, the questions I asked. So can we take a step back and like, so how are you, how are you defining climate change? Well, let's maybe start there. I, I, I don't even know if I know what a, a accurate or concise definition of that is. So, Well, the, the climate change would be uh, the change in mm -hmm. um, you know, temperature, right. seasons. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't have my slides with me, but... Yeah, the, but the, the change in those, those climatic, climatic factors, mm -hmm. um, uh, precipitation, mm -hmm. the frequency of storm events, okay. um, the amount of rain per storm event, mm -hmm. the amount of tornadoes per storm event, those are those are all broad scale. So climate is is weather occurring at, at broader spatial scales mm -hmm. and, and longer time periods. Okay. When the, and that's what allows us to make predictions about what the climate will be because we're looking at larger time scales in a broader spatial area. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between climate and weather. Okay. Right? And so actually Thomas Jefferson mm -hmm. coined the phrase climate. So Thomas Jefferson saw climate as being very different than Thank weather. Interesting. Crazy to think it went, goes that far back, but I mean, I guess he, you know, he was really smart, right. so it's not a huge <laughs> surprise either. Um, so what are the sort of things that when you're looking at, you know, you're teaching in this class, like what are you being aware of when it comes to the effects, you know, the climate effect changes that real estate has? Like, what, where do you even begin that? I mean, it just seems like that's probably a huge issue to tackle. Well, like, you know, I, I, I talk about the stressors, right. those severe events. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also talk about migration mm -hmm. and the movement of people okay. under climate change. And so, for example, we're expecting um, a, a paper down at the University of Georgia, mm -hmm. Dr. <coughs> Dr. Power, um, predicts 13.1 13, million people will be displaced due to sea level rise. In the, in the in U.S. What, in, in what sort of time period? In the U.S. by the year 2100. So, I mean, that's really not that far. I mean, so that's not that far away, I guess, right? Right. Wow. So that's 13.1 million people, and most of it, most of that's occurring in the southeast here. Right. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, you've got a lot of big seaboard cities. Right. And so I just highlight to realtors, like, let's think about that in terms of real estate commissions. Mm -hmm. Right. If, if, if the average family yeah. bought or sold the average house, one house in that transition, that'd be $60 trillion in real estate commissions. Wow. Right. So climate change is fundamentally going to change the real estate industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we need to get ready to for that to happen. And also, we also have to be trained to have the conversation, mm -hmm. especially w with those uh, consumers affected by flooding and sea level rise and wildfires. They, yeah. They'll have the dialogue and they'll want to know, are you aware of these issues? Can we bring it local? Like, yeah. What are the things that, you know, oh, so locally, that in Nashville you sh should be aware of or what are, what are yeah. the ripple effects that we are causing, I guess? 
So locally, you know, I, I think the concern would be um, flood zones mm -hmm. that are FEMA floodplain maps don't okay. incorporate climate change. Oh, they don't? They don't. They do not. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so that'd be very important. Good starting point, yeah. And, and, you know, in the mortgage industry that, you know, requires the, mm -hmm. the flood insurance and that review, mm -hmm. they're not using the right maps either. How probable, and I don't know if this is a rabbit hole or not, but is it to be outside of a floodplain and then be inside of it within like a 30-year time span? That's you a know? good question. I, I can't give you that answer. Right. But I do know that, you know, now we're talking about the the 500-year floodplain being the new 100-year floodplain. Oh, really? Wow. Right. And so there's even a commercial, like I saw a commercial on, on the TV. I don't watch TV that yeah. much, but by Allstate, mm -hmm. and that's... That was our intro. It was like the 500 year flood is the new 100 year flood. I was, I was floored that Allstate had that commercial. Right. So well, I posted it on They've run into it then, probably, right. right? Like that's what's happened, I'm sure. Right. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so I caution yeah. clients, even if they're buying something in the 500 year floodplain, to think about getting flood insurance, mm -hmm. even though it's not required. Just because the chance is there. Right. Because our, you know, um, the FEMA floodplain maps are based on land use mm -hmm. and old storms mm -hmm. they don't incorporate what's happening in the future the yeah. projected weather patterns huh so there are private firms now providing these those data services within the real estate industry mm -hmm. but you know they charge yeah. you know so i'm trying to make this information available to everybody so that no matter your income level well and i was kind of about to ask you about that so I, i'm not a real estate agent and I know a lot of oh, people okay. who are, you know, who invest aren't real estate agents either, but they can have a significant impact on markets mm -hmm. just because of, you know, volume of buying, selling, being landlords and things like that, right? What, how is this information available to somebody who's not an agent? Like, do you do courses or classes for non-agents or like, how do you, how do you, how else do you, does somebody get your contact or, or, or you know, your information? Well, I can share it with you on your website yeah, for sure. Be, yeah. Um, I mean, we'll include it in the show notes. So if you've got like a website you want people to go yeah. to, like by all means, please share that because I, I know that there's definitely people who tune in who are going to be interested in hearing this that aren't agents who might not even be investors. They're just trying to be conscious homeowners. Yeah. So I developed a, a climate change property disclosure. Okay. Like a lead-based paint disclosure. <laughs> right. And, um, and I can share that with you on your website okay. so you can share it with folks. But that goes through the critical websites to go to to get data <clears throat> wow. about threats. Okay. Um, and that's just something I'm mm -hmm. sharing with as many people as possible. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and then I also have the, the, the entire course mm -hmm. online. Well, that, what, what's the, how's that course presented? It's, um, it's, it's just an online course um, through Learn Worlds. Okay. And I can also provide that link as well. Yeah. And then, and then I've been working to get it um, accepted. So the whole real estate industry is highly regulated, right? Mm -hmm. So the yeah. education is highly regulated. So it's a slow process. But yeah. you said five states, though, right? Yeah. So that's five states for me to go and speak in person. Very cool. Do, what, I, what five states are they? Actually, I should have asked you this. For, I feel like that's a huge accomplishment. I don't know. I can't even imagine what that must like the process of going through that. Well, yeah. Thanks. I. Um, it was just paperwork, really. You know, but that's probably why it seems daunting to me. <laughs> um, so Texas, yeah, Georgia, mm -hmm. New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Okay, so not even Ash, not North Carolina. Not North Carolina. Huh? Oh wow. So yeah, so I heard, first proposed it and called the, the North Carolina Real Estate Commission, and it was very excited about my idea. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they they were less than um, enthusiastic mm -hmm. about the idea. Huh. And they really didn't see how climate change was germane to the practice of real estate um, because of the um, because of the political beliefs. And this was, you know, this was two years ago, though. Yeah. Um, and I kind of commented that, well, you know, if I practice real estate based on the majority of political beliefs, I'd probably be sued. <laughs> right? Yeah, there, there's definitely a good argument for that. So, um, so I plan to get that submitted soon. Yeah, I, I think. Luck with that. Yeah, I think it'll come back around, but I've just been trying to, I figured I'd go to other markets mm -hmm. and they just got to get out in front of realtors and yeah. talk to them about this. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, man, I feel like we've covered a lot, but probably haven't even scratched the surface. What else? I mean, 
what should we know that I haven't asked you about or what are topics that we haven't gotten into that, you know, that, that are important to know? Well, like, take it away for a second. Well, I guess to get, I don't think I answered your other question uh, very fully, but so in terms of local threats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the floodplains mm -hmm. is an issue, but also wildfire. Really? Yeah. So um, locally in the east here, we haven't seen an increase in frequency of wildfire yet due to climate change. Mm -hmm. We can't say that the wildfire that we're seeing is due to climate change okay. in the east. There's a lot of data out west where we can, we can say that. Okay. But I, um, but there are a lot of homes that are at a high wildfire risk in, in Asheville. And NEMAC mm -hmm. at University of North Carolina Asheville did a really nice study of this. And you can go to their website and get information mm -hmm. on it. Um, but that, that's the main concern that I have when I talk to clients. There's uh, wildfire. wildfire. More so than the flooding. More so than the flooding. And are there wildfire planes or like well, how, how do you know if you're there are. I mean there there are maps. Okay. So so there are maps that I work with and I download from mm -hmm. government websites, but they're not publicly provided like the floodplain maps yet. Mm -hmm. I hope they will be soon. Okay. But I found in Texas they are. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And like every state is so different in terms of, this, of these data. Um, and so I've been providing those maps a little bit when people ask for it and mm -hmm. I just talk to them about it. But also, the critical thing would be um, the FireWise program. FireWise? FireWise.org. Okay. Right? So it's it's an amazing program. Um, so they go in and work with communities mm -hmm. and bring communities together with the firefighters and talk about lowering risk. Hmm. So I think that's the most critical thing to get out in, yeah. terms, of, in terms of Western North Carolina. Hmm. That's, I, I mean, that's good to know. I, I was thinking, I was like, there's no way that we have wildfires. And then I was thinking, it was like two years ago, I think, is when we had those bad ones up in Lake Lure, I think, right? Was that about Yeah, in Lake Lure, ago, right? and then the like, year before was up in Hot Springs. That's right. It was those two years back to back, and I guess it just, I mean, uh, I guess memory is short, right? It really wasn't that long ago, but. Yeah. Yeah, we're really lucky that Lake Lure didn't get was worse. I mean, yeah. it was... Um, I remember, so I play soccer here, and I remember they canceled a couple of our soccer games based on, you know, the air quality. Smoke risk. Yeah. yeah. I was, like, stunned. I was like, wow. Yeah. Um, that'd be the most important thing. And also, yeah. I, I guess, also in terms of consumers, mm -hmm. you know, feel free to ask your realtor tough questions. Mm -hmm. And know? then if they don't know the answers, then you can have your realtors reach out to you, right? Right, exactly. Absolutely. Um, cool. Well, I, again, I want to make sure that we, we touch on everything that's important. I don't know if that's even realistic or possible, uh, but is there anything else that, again, we might have skipped over um, or glossed over that, that we should come back to? I guess my, my, my closing message, I, yeah. my closing message would be that not all properties are equally vulnerable mm -hmm. to, to severe weather events and climate change. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's important to go to the NOAA website and, and try to find the, the, the wildfire data mm -hmm. and ask about how updated your FEMA floodplain maps are mm -hmm. to, to right. avoid a high-risk area. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be the most important thing. I, because, you know, what we're seeing is that people are ending up with a mortgage but no equity. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. I um, it's a whole different episode of itself. But yeah, I personally, I'm not a huge believer in like owning. Like I think okay, I'm a, like I'm like I think it makes sense when there's a very strong like heartfelt emotional reason. But from a numeric standpoint, I I uh, I'm not saying it isn't beneficial. I'm just saying it's I don't I think it's hard if that's what you're counting on it to be beneficial. It's history a risk. has proven that it's not a sure thing. Well, real estate is a risky market because it's not very liquid. Yeah. That's what, I think that's what you're saying. Yeah, and if you're in a situation, well, again, that's a different episode. But it just if you're in a situation where you're not prepared for it, I mean, a house can be the worst thing that can happen to you if you need to be nimble and make quick life adjustments. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't count on being able to get out of the house. Right. So, um well, Doug, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, once again, do you mind uh, if somebody's interested or wants to get contacted with you, what's the best way for them to reach out to you or to work with you or whatever, learn more? Yeah, the best way to reach out to me would be my email, um, yeah. Doug, yeah. Doug at esmarkets.com, and okay. we'll share that online. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I'll share the link to the online uh, course yeah. and the uh, property disclosure. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. And uh, yeah, I look forward to creating this awareness and moving this forward. Yeah, absolutely. Doug, well, man, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, yeah, I feel like we should have another one in a couple months or something. We, I, like, I feel like we just scratched the surface. Of, I'm happy to come back anytime. Yeah, I definitely uh, am curious. So we'll, we'll connect again. All right. Appreciate it, Doug. Thank you. All right, guys, there you have it. We just scratched the surface. Um, don't even know what to say other than make sure you check out the links below, check out the property disclosure information. And, and as Doug mentioned, yeah, de never be afraid to ask your agent hard questions if you're working with them. Uh, connect with Doug. If you have any questions below, submit them in the comments and please share this with a friend if you found this useful. Uh, once again, this episode is brought to you all by American IRA LLC, your local self-directed uh, self IRA custodian. See you all next week. Take care. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Absolutely, man. How do you feel like it went? I feel like it went really well. Good. I mean, I was nervous, but I feel Good. like it went well. No, I think it went well, too. I felt like, I think, you know, me not knowing as much.